Hello. Hi, how are you guys doing? Can can you guys hear me? Okay, just wanted to make sure if you guys can hear me first. So, yes, we are live again. And uh, I I put a title uh, to talk about hydroponic and indoor gardening, but we can talk about whatever you guys want. So ask in the questions in the comments, and then uh, I'll try to respond. So today is a, it's a pretty cold, uh, rainy day here in Texas, and uh, the kids are asleep, so I have a little bit of time to, uh, to go live. Wow, we have 31 people joining us. Thank you guys, for and, and gals, and ladies, and gentlemen. Thanks for joining me. Chili, how are you? Aaron, how's it going, buddy? Good to see you here. Eric, good to see you, Eric Hale. How are you doing? I haven't seen a video from your channel in a while. It's probably because it's, it's winter time, right? Matthew, yes, Texas. Uh, yeah, we're, we're getting a little rain right now, so it's pretty cold. Hello from Denmark. Central New York. <laughs> <coughs> okay, so uh, yeah, uh, I don't have anything planned. Uh, I was just going to talk about uh, hydroponics and indoor gardening because right now it's so cold. And uh, you can't really do anything outside. So I think uh, it's a good time to, to do something indoors. And I have a few projects going on, uh, a lo lots and lots of hydroponic growing. Uh, I've been harvesting vegetable probably since August uh, with my indoor grow room. I, I grow so many things like uh, romaine lettuce, uh, arugula, uh, Let's see, Celtis lettuce. There's a bunch of stuff, but lettuce is uh, is amazing to grow in hydroponic. And, uh, you know, I haven't bought a, a head of lettuce in a while. And uh, I went to the stores the other day, and it was, I think it was $2.19 for a head of lettuce. That's pretty expensive. Oh, wow, we have people from Germany. Hello there. Uh, okay, let me go to the comments. <laughs> uh, if, if your indoor plants won't flower, it's probably because they're not ready yet. Uh, plants uh, or pepper plants do take around, uh, you know, like four to six months to, you know, to fully produce. So if they're not flowering yet, then they're not ready. Uh, if they look unhealthy, then there's a problem with the soil. But if they look healthy and they're not flowering, uh, it's okay. Just wait a little bit. Uh, sometimes they don't flower also because of the cold condition. Um, they, they, they slow down a little bit if it's cold. East Texas, hello. Wow, we have somebody from Brazil. Rafael, hello there. Good to have everyone here. Uh, yeah, every now and then you may have one plant that seems to be like not growing. Uh, and the funny thing is a lot of people will give up on that plant. But if you actually take care of that plant, it sometimes come out to be the best looking plant you have. So, you know, treat it right. Uh, give it some time. Uh, check the soil. If the soil is, um, is compacted or bad or, you know, it doesn't have a lot of the organic matter, uh, then they may have some root problem. Uh, it could be also overwatering and all that stuff. So check, if the plant's not growing, then, you know, a lot of the time it is because uh, there's something in the soil. Uh, 
Uh, if your plants are not flowering in DWC, uh, it, uh, check the roots. If the roots are healthy, uh, it could be, you know, uh, in hydroponic, it's, it's really hard to, to diagnose unless I could see what's going on. But uh, if your plants are growing well and it's not flowering or producing fruits in DWC, uh, it could be because uh, there's a high nitrogen concentration. Like it, it keeps making the plants grow but not flower. So you may have to reduce the, the nitrogen contents and then, you know, increase the bloom. Uh, that, that sometimes does help uh, with the fruiting stage. Uh, sometimes the, the plants are just not ready. So if it's ready, then it will flower. Yeah, uh, uh, Brad, you're right. It could also mean uh, nutrients lockout. Uh, that could happen many times. So uh, a best way to know for sure is uh, uh, flush it out, flush the nutrients out, rinse off the roots, and give it a half-strength nutrient mix, and then it slowly introduce it back. And that should uh, allow the plant to start over again. <clears throat> Brad, thank you for joining me, guys. Uh, Brad is here. Uh, Brad, Hidden Harvest Grow Light Company. Uh, he is the, uh, the owner of Hidden Harvest Company Grow Lights, a friend of mine, and uh, I've used his light uh, for a while. I still have a few of his lights right now that I'm using for some of the smaller plants. Uh, they're, they're really neat little units that are really lightweight, and uh, if you can find a way to hang it, you can grow a few plants in there. Cheers, guys. <laughs> I have a strawberry beer today. So uh, cheers. Are you guys going to join me? Uh, let me go to the comments and read some stuff. Um, thoughts on ordering seeds from overseas. Uh, yeah. So I think there is a strict rule right now that it has been imposed uh, when ordering seeds overseas. It has, some, it has to have some kind of certificate. So sometimes it could be very difficult to order seeds from overseas. I think Seven Pot uh, Club uh, um, did a segment on it uh, to, to tell about how difficult it is to buy uh, seeds overseas. Irish whiskey, yes. Um, I, I am a big fan of whiskey. Any kind of whiskey, whiskey with a Y, whiskey with an EY. <laughs> Any kind of whiskey is good for me. Uh, will the Pepper X seeds be available anytime soon? You know, I hear a lot about that Pepper X, but I don't think it's available to the public. So it's only... Uh, for uh, making a certain hot sauce called the last dab. But as far as seeds, I don't think you can buy it. Jim, Mr. Jim Kingman. Good to have you, sir. Glad you can join me. Yeah, so for the Pepper X, I don't, the, the, the public, no one has the seeds. I, I don't know if it's ever going to be available. Uh, the Linzo seeds, you know, I have a ton of um, Linzo seeds uh, circling around in Pepper Lovers community. Uh, I just sent out a bunch of sweet Linzo. Oh, man, that variety is so, is so awesome. Uh, it has no heat in it, but uh, it tastes amazing. It's almost like, um, you know, you eat the pepper and it has that peppery flavor. And then you're waiting for the heat to come but all you get is the sweetness of it. There is really tiny little bit of heat in there. So it's a, it's a really good pepper. And it is extremely productive. It produces so many pods. Uh, it's a late season plant. So right now, I still have pods outside. It's December 13 right now. Uh, I'm going to dig it up and bring it inside because it's one of my favorite. Uh, do you have any tips on preventing from tipping over? <laughs> yes. Uh, preventing peppers from tipping over. Uh, it, it tips over because it grows too tall. And to prevent peppers from growing too tall, it needs to have adequate lighting. Uh, if you're growing indoors, then that's a big struggle. So if you're growing indoor and your pepper plants are like, you know, really tall, try to put the light closer. And uh, if the intensity of the light is uh, strong enough, you would not have a tall pepper plant. But if it's already tall, 
you can actually cut it back. Just cut it back and move the light down. And that will allow the plants to get the intensity that it needs and it will grow shorter. Yes, uh, Brad is right. Also, a fan, you know, because uh, outside, plants are used to being blown by the wind like this. And that does help develop a nice, strong trunk system when it's way like that. So introducing a fan that circulates, uh, you know, air around, moving the trees around like that or the plants around, that does help strengthen it up as well. Thanks, Brad, for, for that. Do you have an online where you sell your seeds? Uh, I don't sell seeds. Uh, I mentioned uh, that it's going to always be free. Uh, if I do sell the seeds, everything is going to go to charity. And uh, my friend Chris, Chris and I are going to, are trying to make something happen where we're going to sell seeds, but all of the profit is going to go completely to all to charity. There's, there's not, um, so that, that's the plan. So, uh, Yes, I don't sell seeds, but if I do, it's going to be for charity uh, purposes. Uh, let me go to the comment again. <laughs> Let's see. I got to get closer to, to read this. Yeah, thanks, Jim. So, yeah, the idea, uh, you know, you guys already know I don't sell any of my seeds. I, I, I want it to be free and available for people to share with other people. I, I think, you know, that's that's the best way to get the seeds around and also get people introduced to, um, you know, some of the, 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 the cool varieties that we have growing. So the more people share, the better it, the better it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you know, I I don't mind that people sell um, some of the stuff, but I hope that they can, uh, um, you know, share it freely. Like, so, you know, people, a lot of people make stuff out of uh, the peppers that I uh, that I created. Uh, you know, they can sell those because that's hard work. You know, turning the peppers, just growing it, picking it processing it and make something out of it yeah they can they can sell those because that's that's a lot of work that goes into it they need you know some kind of return <laughs> yeah jim thanks for thanks for that yeah you know you and i are the same uh we don't sell our seeds <laughs> it's it's sh i want it to be to share it with everybody so the lemon starburst guys let me show you uh, if you guys haven't seen it um, the lemon starburst, we have a map uh, that shows where the lemon starburst are being grown. And uh, it's pretty amazing. I think it's grown all over the world right now. So I'm going to get the map and show it to you guys. There you go. Uh, click on that link. And uh, you see where all the places around the world people are growing gr the lemon starburst. So it's pretty awesome. Uh, do hydro versus do zone aquaponics side by side will get a better pepper with more flavor? Uh, that's hard to say because I don't do aquaponics, so I don't really know. But I know that aquaponic is basically every all natural. Um, so. It could be. I, I really don't don't know, but I know for one thing, when I grow stuff in uh, soil, like peppers, for example, and I grow one in hydroponic, the hydroponic one is hotter. It could be, you know, there's certain conditions uh, that needs to be addressed also, but most of the time, my hydroponic peppers are so crazy hot, as opposed to the same one in soil. <laughs> yeah, Aaron, you know, that's crazy. There's somebody in the middle of the ocean where growing a lemon starburst. I'm not sure how that happens, but yeah, it's pretty amazing. So yeah, the, the lemon starburst is, is distributed worldwide, guys. So if you live near someone that uh, that may have it, they, they may share it with you. Uh, the people in Europe are growing it, in Africa, South America, in Asia, everywhere. And as Aaron mentioned, in the middle of the ocean somewhere. <laughs> uh, 
So yeah, guys, check out uh, Brad's uh, website, Hidden Harvest Company. I think he has a, a, a new light setup coming. Like a 400 watts, 600 watts. Uh, check those out. I, I also did a few videos on uh, Brad's grow light before, so you can also browse my channel and see the results. Uh, what EC fertilizer should I be aiming for growing with hot peppers? Uh, you know, um, John, I don't even check EC. Uh, you know, I'm just too lazy to do that. I don't want to invest in those EC measure. So uh, most of the time when I grow peppers, uh, right now I'm using the Aero Garden plant food. And uh, as you've seen in many of my videos, I just put five milliliter per gallon of water and I just let it go. I don't even measure pH. I don't measure EC. I don't do anything like that. Uh, it's a lazy way, but I do get results. Uh, is it the best result? Probably not because plants do need a proper pH level in order for it to be able to take up all of the, uh, the different uh, uh, nutrients in there. So yes, pH is important uh, when you're growing fruiting plants like peppers and tomatoes, if you can adjust the pH to around 6, 5.9 to 6, that would allow the plants to take up the necessity, all the nutrients that is uh, that it needs, and uh, it will grow best at that, um, at that pH level. Yeah, the, the Aaron, the hydro with pH buffer, you know, in the past, I've seen that a lot, but lately I don't see anything label on the, you know, on the label that has pH buffer. Uh, I'm not sure which one has it now. But yeah, I, I use the Aero Garden right now because it's the simplest thing for me. And uh, I just, nutrients and water and that's it. <laughs> Yeah, and a lot of people ask about uh, organic hydroponic nutrients. And I don't use it. I haven't used it before, so I don't really know how well that works. But um, I may do some in the future. They, they do have those available. So um, I may pick some up and check it out and test it, and then I'll, I'll let you guys know. Oh, Maxi Bloom has a buffer. I, I actually used Maxi Bloom and Maxi Grow before. I think they discontinued that product already. Uh, what's your favorite medium to low heat chilies? Um, you know what? Great question because right now I'm really loving the Ahi Omni color. So right now is December 13th. And my plants outside are still producing beautiful pods. They're, they're pretty nice tasting. They're sweet, uh, has a little heat, and uh, they're just amazing peppers. So the Ahi Omni color is great. Uh, my Sugar Rush is doing really well right now, even in the cold weather. So I do love the Sugar Rush. Um, so lately, I used uh, a lot of Sugar Rush to make um, a chili oil. So I have, I have a combination of these, the, my star screen, which is like a Thai variety uh, peppers. And then I add a few of the um, sugar rush peach and a few of the uh, Ahi Omni color. I dried them up, crush them up and make chili oil. Oh man, it's amazing. The flavor is fantastic. Uh, let me see. Uh, Okay, so you've been doing outdoors gardening and you want to start indoor gardening, uh, like hydroponic. Uh, I would say keep it simple as possible. You need a pH meter for sure. Uh, make your own systems. Just buy those totes from my Home Depot and just make your own. Uh, start out with a, a small system and grow lettuce. Grow lettuce first. Uh, use simple uh, you can buy the Aero Garden plant food in a small, uh, uh, you know, just a small container. They're they're pretty inexpensive 
for a small one, that would last you for a while. So start with a small system, uh, grow a few romaine lettuce indoors, uh, you know, and uh, once you successfully grown lettuce, then you're going to move up to other stuff in no time. Uh, but lettuce is a, is, a good, is a good plant to start out. So if you can grow lettuce uh, and successfully do it, you're, you're set. You're going you're gonna to want to do so many more things. Uh, you can also do basil because they, they grow so fast. Like uh, sweet basils are, are really good. And any of the leafy greens, they're, they're really easy. Yeah, so a few, a few people mentioned hot sauce. Uh, yeah, uh, right now I'm 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 doing fermented hot sauce. Oh man, it turns out so good. So if you guys ever had a chance to uh, to ferment pepper and make it into hot sauce, the flavor is just so different. It's amazing. Uh, you don't even have to add a lot of ingredients. Just a little bit of salt, a little bit of sugar, a little bit of vinegar after after the the, the fermenting uh, process have completed. And uh, it is awesome. You should try it. Yeah, hydroponic basils are just amazing. Uh, they grow so fast, and they smell so good. Every time I grow by, I go by my system. I just touch them, and the the smell is just amazing. Uh, how long will fermented hot sauce last? A very long time. I don't know exactly how long, but. For me, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you from my own experience, I've left my Pimenta hot sauce uh, over six months and it's, it's still fine. But, you know, don't take my word for it. Do some research of your own. That's just from my personal experience. I, you know, fermented stuff, uh, basically what people used to do in the past is uh, they ferment it to allow it to keep longer. Like kimchi and stuff like that. Uh, they, they last a very long time. Uh, if you leave it outside, uh, they're fine. They'll last for a while, but if you put it in the fridge, it even lasts longer. Uh, a lot of people ask, like, hey, when after I make hot sauce, should I keep it outside or should I keep it in the fridge? So here's the, here's the thing. If you keep it outside, the oxidation process would change the color of your hot sauce. It would make it a, for a more brownish color, and it's not attractive and appealing. But if you keep it in the fridge, it keeps the same color for a very long time. So it's very attractive and it's more appealing. So uh, keep it in the fridge <laughs> to retain the beautiful color. Yeah, uh, so a lot of people are talking about uh, fermented sauce. Hey, Marco from Poland. Um. Good to have you here. <laughs> wow, we have a, 106 people viewing. Thank you guys for uh, joining. Mr. Morn Garner, you're back. I'm glad to have you back with us. Thanks for joining. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you like the show <laughs> Mr. Uh, the Morning Gardener has a, a YouTube channel also guys um, and you should watch him he has an amazing voice also he does karaoke so uh, I, th I think you should do some gardening and karaoke at the same time <laughs> that, that, would, that would be fun <laughs> Uh, the Sigma Dragon, nice to meet you too. Uh, glad you're here. Bouds grows. Glad to have you back. Uh, man, I've been talking. I, I keep forgetting to read the comments, guys. Uh, so if I missed your question, please write it again, and I'll, I'll try to read it. Is the KS White Tie a tie cross? Uh, you know, it's the it's it's not a tie cross. I think it's a natural selected process to to uh, for that. And I didn't, I didn't create the, the Kangstar White Tie. Uh, people call it the Kangstar White Tie. It's probably because I popularized it. Uh, I got it. I got the seeds from um, a friend a long time ago. And I've been growing it for ever since. And I introduced it to Pepper Lovers community. And uh, it kind of took off. It's, it's a great variety. I, I grow that every year. And I never go without 
a few plants every season because my family loves it. Uh, any thought how big how big the cracky container should be for indoor peppers? Uh, it, if you're going to grow indoor peppers and you want to go cracky, then the bigger the better. And the reason I said that is because pepper plants can grow enormous. And cracky is basically a non-circulating method. And so what that means is as the nutrients level drop, the roots expand. To, to pick up the nutrients. So if you refill it in the cracking method, your pepper plants will drown. So what that means is pepper plants can grow really big and they can drink a lot of water. So I recommend more than five gallons. So to prevent you from having to refill too often and potentially drown the plants. So um, yeah, in cracky, the roots would go down and it creates air roots and water roots. So you have to pay attention to the air roots and the water roots. If you drown the air roots, um, you know, like submerge it, the roots would die. And then it cannot take up the oxygen. So I would say if you're going to if you're gonna do uh, cracky pepper plants um, and you want it to grow big, you can trim it to make it smaller. Uh, I would say five to Five at the minimum, but ten gallons would probably be better. Uh, but it'll it'll go through that very quickly once it once they get bigger. Uh, if you're growing lettuce uh, and you want to use the cracky method, one gallon per plant is all you need. Uh, it, they would not drink the whole even the whole gallon in like thirty days. Uh, yes, Aaron mentioned uh, Peter Stanley and Matt Garver. Those are those are really um, great growers that 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 do huge uh, cracky systems. Uh, I think Matt and uh, Peter da, did like fifty gallons, and uh, they grow it outside. So you can actually grow cracky outside. Uh, sixty gallons, fifty gallons. Uh, those are probably uh, the best. The 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 plant would grow into like tree size. <laughs> you know, cracky method is very easy. Uh, so don't 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 tr don't complicate it. Just do it. You know, I I made so many videos on it, and it's exactly that easy. I didn't I didn't simplify it any more than that. Is that's just exactly how I did it. Just put in the the water, add the nutrients, put in the plant, and just wait. That's a, that's that's usually what I do. Yeah, if you have a 3.3 gallons, uh, you're going to have to refill very often. And the refilling process, you can't refill above a certain point. So it's going to drink up quickly because then you know, the three gallons become like one and a half gallon. Yeah, fermented uh, can keep for a long time, but if you add vinegar, it does also help the shelf life. You're right. <laughs> uh, Roman said, yeah, help. adding vinegar will help. Um, let's see, someone mentioned that. Sir Wobbles, yeah, Sir Wobbles, sorry. <laughs> yeah, if you're going to use big, a uh, huge container. Uh, you can get those at a certain places where sometimes they give those uh, buckets out for free, like restaurants and stuff like that. And those are food grade too. So uh, you can actually get some really good containers at no cost. What is the hottest pepper you grew this year? Uh, I think it would probably be the Staracha Hornet. That thing is it crazy. It's so it's so hot. Uh, the other day, I made some uh, pickled onions, and I put in half of the Staracha Hornet. Oh man, that thing is so crazy hot. It's it's enough to to make a big container, you know, to add some heat to it. Uh, the best way to prune pepper plants, uh, you know, usually. Uh, 
I only prune if I want to slow the plants down. Uh, normally, uh, when I grow uh, super hot uh, when, to take outside, I, I try not to prune it unless I absolutely have to, uh, to kind of like slow them down before I take them outside. So uh, you can prune pretty much at any stage. So, so say, for example, uh, when it gets to this size, it, it splits into a Y like that. You cut at the Y and it grows from the bottom. And usually that's the best way. Uh, but say uh, if the plant is already outside, don't don't prune those. <laughs> Pepper plants grow amazing without being pruned uh, if it's already outside. So only prune it outside to save space. And so that's usually what I do. Uh, sometimes I grow in small hydroponic systems. I prune constantly to keep them little. Uh, but if I if I have the plants already outside in the dirt, I, I don't prune those. Uh, I do sometimes if the plants, you know, the branches are crossing each other and getting in the way. So you prune them to kind of clear and allow air to flow through. So pruning, it's a it's a good thing. But um, you know, just prune it if you if you need to. Have you ever used Flora Nova series? No, I have not. I have not used Flora Nova. Um, but I think a lot of people used it before and they, they say it was really good. Uh, I use the Dyna Grow, Dyna Bloom, Maxi Grow, Maxi Bloom. Uh, what is the other one? Uh, the Aragorn Plant Food and uh, uh, the Master Blend. Uh, and then the, the Flora series, the, the, three, the three parts. Uh, I do top my pepper plants, and as I mentioned, I top them to, to keep them smaller before I take them outside. Or I top them if I grow them in little systems, in like little hydroponic systems, where if it gets out of control, it drinks too much of the water. So I, I top it and I cut it back to a manageable level. And uh, I do it very often until they start fruiting. And once they start fruiting, then I, le I let them go. Uh, how do you get rid of aphids uh, when they come in with their plants? Uh, inside, oh man, aphids inside is a, is a, is a huge problem. So uh, if you notice aphids inside your grow room, uh, get that plant and separate it from the rest immediately. So what you should do is take the plant outside and spray it down with a hose and get rid of all of the aphids and then rinse off the, the soil too. Remove remove the plant from the soil and rinse the soil off and put back the new soil and make sure that all the aphids have been dead before you put it back inside because if one aphid survives, it's going to multiply and you're going to have the problem all over again. So uh, yeah, uh, do whatever you can. Sometimes when it gets to the problem where it's just too crazy, I would pluck off all of the leaves and spray the plant down, change the soil and put it back. And uh, usually in a matter of months, the pepper will recover and the aphids will be gone. But, but they do spread very easily. So you have to be very, very careful when you bring your plants inside. And also fungus nets. Uh, when you bring plants from outside inside and you don't rinse down the, uh, the, the soil, you're going to bring those guys inside. So you get one or two. And in no time, you're going to have 10, 20, and 30, and then the whole room is going to be covered. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a mess. Uh, how, how is my Starscream Mini doing? It's actually doing really good. Uh, I have multiple Starscream Mini grown right now in my tent. They're like this little, like a few inches, but they produce a ton of peppers. Uh, having problem with overwintering um what what is the problem uh, that you're having uh overwintering uh it could be a challenge if you haven't done it before but it, it's actually not too difficult to do usually i'll just trim the plants down you can trim it down to like even two to three inches left of the trunk and the plant will still live but I wouldn't recommend trimming that far back. Just like, you know, trim it to around six inches left. Just leave a few nodes and uh, uh, take care of the roots. Don't overwater because if you trim, that means the plant has nothing to, uh, you know, allow the water to escape. And so when you trim, you have to water less. All you have to do is keep the, the soil 
moist and that should be good enough. <laughs> uh, from down under, hello, KKY. Uh, I guess the land down under is Australia, right? Jimmy Pickles, the man is here. <laughs> Thanks for joining. Uh, um, yeah, I, I have a, a bunch of uh, tiny plants that, I, that I'm growing. Uh, I have the Linzo, the, ti yeah, the, the Starscream Mini, and the, um, the Lingria. Those, those grow very small. And uh, they taste great. They're just really fun little plants to grow, and they they just produce like crazy. <laughs> Starscream from Transformer. That that's who inspired the name. I love Starscream. He's he's a really funny dude. I grew up watching Transformer, so uh, I, you know Starscream is probably one of my favorite characters. He's just so cool, you know. He's a, he's a jet. He could fly. He always betray uh, Megatron. <laughs> it's just it's hilarious can you overwinter in cracky setup yes you can you can overwinter in cracky setup uh, it does take some work to, to, to get the plants adjusted but you can uh, if, if you haven't you know check out Peter Stanley video Andre uh, Peter did one recently where he took uh, a huge pepper it, it almost looked like a tree and then he put it into his fish, uh, his fish tank, sort of like a fish tank. And uh, he does it uh, non-circulating, cracky method. method. And uh, the plant is growing really nice right now. <laughs> this is my tech support headphone. <laughs> yeah, Jimmy, um, this is my, I, I used to play video games. So this is my headphone right here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I did have a little mini star scream that I grew in a in a in a water bottle. It's really small, but I, I don't I don't I have it right now. I think I put it out in the garden already. Uh, air. Aaron Crockett, uh, DWC cucumber, twenty seven gallons container using Dynagrow. Uh, the cucumber started dying when uh, flowers are, are start to turn yellow. Uh, cucumbers, uh, you know, it depends on which variety you're growing. Uh, if you're growing cucumbers inside, I recommend choosing a variety that is uh, um, Janicious. Janicious are cucumber varieties that produce only the female flowers, which means as soon as you see the flower, that's a cucumber. It, it will turn into a cucumber eventually. Um, you can also grow, um, uh, what's this other one? I forgot the name of it. <laughs> uh, I grow a lot of the Gynecious variety, like the Diva and the Socrates. And uh, they're really easy to grow, and they produce really early. When they get to like a foot long, they produce uh, cucumbers already. And uh, cucumbers, they're really heavy feeders. So you you're gonna need like a, a, at least at least a 15 gallon container, but you say you have 33 gallons, 27 gallons is perfect. 27 is good. Uh, if you're having fruiting problem, check to see what variety of cucumbers that is. It it may require pollination. Uh, also check to see if uh, your your pH level is on point, like 5.9 to six, and um, if you wanna if you want to check the uh, the PPM, there's a chart online that you can Google. It'll tell you how much PPM uh, cucumbers require. It's a really, really helpful chart. I'm not, okay, I'll go back to the comment and read some more stuff. Oh, well, somebody asked how old is my oldest cracky plants. Uh, I have kept one cracky hydroponic plant for over two years. Uh, so they can live that long. But it does take a lot of work because as it gets really big, um, you're going to have to clean it out occasionally. 
rinse the roots off and also try not to drown it when you refill. You have to refill to a certain level where you will not drown the pepper plant. So two weeks will work. <laughs> Did I name my channel after Gangstar? <laughs> I, I actually know who Gangstar is, that rapping group. They're, they're really good, by the way. I, I do like them. But no, that's not, uh, that's not who they're named after. Uh, what's a good pepper uh, to start the cross with? Uh, if you, if you want to cross peppers, um, pick varieties that you really enjoy, like whatever varieties that uh, that you like and there's certain traits that you want you know to mix so um, like for example I did uh, I grew the Bahamian goat and uh, uh, the Emma scotch bonnet for a while and I really love those two varieties and they actually have great flavor on their own um, but I really wanted to see what happens if I crossed the two and man they turned out great so make sure it is the varieties that you really love like or or like say for example this like you you like you like the thai varieties for example but it it lacks certain sweetness then you pick up another variety that's comp comparable then you cross the two and see if you get the traits to carry over like i did the the scotch bonnet with the uh the thai bird's eye and that turned out great um there's a chart. I'll, I'll share the chart with you guys so that you can see uh, which which um, varieties are compatible. Uh, let's see. Okay, here's the link to the, the chart that I, I go by. So if you, you, you click on that link, it'll tell you which varieties are compatible and which varieties are semi-fertile after you, you successfully crossed it. So it does help to, um, you know, with your, your crossing in Denver. So use the chart and just go by that. It, it really helps. Jason, thanks for for joining from Canada. Uh, the pump settings for AeroGuard, uh, I usually set the pump to run one hour off one hour. That that's the best. You don't need to you don't need the pump to run twenty four hours. So just do one hour on, one hour off, and just let that keep going on for for as long as your pepper is alive. So the thing with with uh, with the aeration in the water, uh, a lot of people may uh, you know think that you have to have the pump runs all the time in order to have oxygen in the water. That and you know that is really not true because look at the lake. You know the lake doesn't have a pump running all the time. You know it does have disturbance, all this like stuff like that. So once the air pump is running and it creates bubble for an hour. The pumps can be off for a few more hours and the pepper plants will be fine. So they, they won't drown immediately. It'll take like days for the plant to drown. So you can turn on the pump for an hour, off for four hours, and it'll still be fine. Uh, your Dynagro keep getting crystal sediments. Yeah, you know, uh, those are... Um, calcium deposits and it ha it happens in any nutrients you use not just dinagro so every nutrients you use it's going to create those deposits and you know kind of like crystallized particles so it's good to ha get in a habit of cleaning it and also one thing that i always recommend if you if you're growing in an arrow garden don't use the granular fertilizer because those things sometimes they don't they don't melt down 100%. So you still have bits and pieces that, that get left behind. So it could get inside the pump. It could get inside the, you know, in, in those crevices and get stuck. So when you use the Aero Garden, use the liquid uh, nutrients. 
I always recommend that. It, it, it helps with the longevity of your system. I think my, my baby is about to be awake. <laughs> so usually I do uh, this session when he's asleep and when he wakes up, then I, I have to get off. Joshua, thanks for dropping by, buddy. Uh, when grafting peppers, is it possible to interchange the main stem of a habanero with a bell? Yes, you can. When grafting peppers, uh, you can actually use any variety onto another variety as long as the pepper they will work. Because I've done, I have a I have a Thai pepper right now, and I have a bacatum variety, and also an annuum. And then also a chinense, and they all are alive on the same plant. So grafting, I don't think there is a, you know, a preference. As long as they're peppers, they should work. But if you're doing a tomato on a peppers, that would not work. <laughs> uh, speaking of grafting peppers, I have one right now that has, uh, it's over, sitting over there right now, five, five grafts on it. So it's really neat. Can you post the link to the grower map? Oh, the, you mean the lemon starburst map? Yeah, let me let me get it for you. Here you go. That's where people are growing lemon starburst all over the world. Uh, if you're growing in a cracky system. How often should you change the nutrients? That's what somebody's asking. So in a cracky system, depending on the size, sometimes when you just started growing the plants, like the pepper plant, it will take for a long time to even go through the system to drink the water. So when the plant is young, you don't have to change very often. I would say four weeks. And then as it gets bigger, then you might have to do it more often because as it gets bigger, it'll drink a lot more. And so if you keep refilling, what happens is that the pepper plants usually take up what they need to take and they leave behind what they don't need to use. So if you keep refilling it, the same things that have left behind get mixed with the nutrients, the new, the new ones, then it becomes imbalanced. So if you keep doing it for a long time, then your plants will start to suffer. So, when, they, when the plant is young, change it like maybe f once every four weeks. But as it gets larger and larger, change it every two to three weeks. That, that's usually what I do. Uh, how long have your air garden lasted? Uh, hidden. hidden. Uh, my air garden... I have had one unit for over three years now. Uh, and then I bought a, an extra unit. And after two years, the, the, the light hood went out. And I contacted Aragorn. I told him exactly what happened. And they sent me a new hood. <laughs> so, you know, if, you're, if your Aragorn is, is, uh, is not working, I recommend contacting them, telling them the, the problem. Uh, you, you know, they may do something for you. They may not, but it's worth a shot. But they did. They switched my light hood for me. Uh, you have a small indoor growing system. Do you need a fan? Uh, it depends. You know, uh, I use a fan because I want to cool the light. My light gets really hot. So I have a fan blowing down on the light to keep it cool. Uh, if you have a small, as you say, small indoor garden, you don't need a fan. Uh, if if you need some circulation, just open the, 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 the tent, the, the, the door, and just allows the air to circulate through. But you don't need a, a, a fan in there. Uh, most people that use exhaust systems and fans. They have a, a huge operation. Uh, yes, the Aragorn, 
actually is not meant for growing peppers. You can grow peppers in the air garden, but as you know, it gets massive and it will go outside the hood. Uh, so you're going to have to trim very often when you're growing in air garden. So definitely when you grow in air garden, you, you have to trim your peppers. And also you leave the light around uh, two inches above the pepper plants for best result. Uh, you notice that your pH was 7.1 and it was growing. Uh, uh, pH 7.1 is, uh, is a little high. Uh, the plants will still grow, but it's, it's not going to grow well. Because at 7.1, that's, that's very on point with the neutral. Uh, but you have to reduce it to around 5.9 to 6 because at that level, uh, there's, there's a pH chart. And you will notice that at, at that point, the sweet spot, it, it'll help the plants take up all of the nutrients easier. And so it will grow better. <laughs> Andre, yes, thank you. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, right now is the best time to start growing inside, right? Because uh, uh, either it's too cold outside or because of uh, some places they have these lockdowns where you really can't go outside too much. So uh, it's a good time to start, you know, researching how to grow indoors. It's a, it's a lot of fun. Uh, I look forward every day to going inside my grow tent and messing with my plants. I grow. I love growing lettuce, guys. Lettuce is just awesome, especially romaine. They grow really fast, and they they just look so beautiful. And you you can literally see them grow in front of your eyes. So um, I recommend trying indoor growing. Uh, yes, uh, if you if your pH bounce around too often. Uh, definitely check your pH meter. Uh, sometimes it needs to be calibrated. So make sure every week you calibrate your pH meter because if you don't, then you will not know that your pH may be off. Have you ever automated your grow? Uh, I would say most of my grow is automated because when I, I grow in, um, in cracky systems, I just set up like a 27 gallons. I set it up for the first day and then I wait 45 days later and I harvest the plants. I really don't do anything after that. So I guess that's, that could be called automated because everything is on a, on a, all my grow lights and stuff like that is on a, on a timer. So it turns on it by itself, turns off by itself. Sometimes I travel and then uh, I'll go for a week and I'll come back. The plants is ready to harvest and they just grow on their own. <laughs> All right, everyone. I think I'm going to end the session here. It's been fun. Thank you for joining me. Uh, my baby's awake, so I got to go get him now. And uh, maybe we'll do it again next week. So it's usually around the same time. Uh, I usually do it on Saturday or Sunday uh, around the same exact time. And uh, it's just ask me anything kind of questions. Uh, so I'll just come on and answer a lot of the questions that I may have missed uh, when I posted videos. So yeah, thanks for joining me and uh, I'll talk to you guys uh, on another session. Have a good weekend.